Okay, guys, I have Edna Hernandez here. She is an EXP agent. And uh, you were telling me you're pretty recent to the, the real estate world, I right? Am. Four I years, am. you said? Um, yeah, in, um, July will be four years. Four years? Yes. And previous to that, you were a teacher? I was a high school teacher for like over 13 years. That's, no, I could never do that. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's hard. It's not the easiest uh, so, profession. Per no, sure. not at all. I know many teachers and they're underpaid, under underappreciated always, but. It is. So what, what prompted you to go from that profession into real estate? Well, we, we know, I think at this point we should go back to the beginning, you yeah. know, after college. I graduated college around 2008. That was when recession was at its finest. Yeah. So my goal was to, um, I, my, you know, degree was criminal justice and management. So the goal was to be a, go to law school eventually. So what I, you know, but at that time, you know, when you graduate, you're trying to get into the courts, do something. Uh -huh. And literally I would get emails saying, Edna, right now we're not hiring. We're no actually laying people off. No one was hiring. So at that moment, education was, Dallas ISD was the one that was hiring at that moment. You know, teachers are always needed. Always. There's always kids. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for like two, three years while all these kids figure out and then go to law school. However, teaching can be very stressful, but it's a job that you learn to love it. With the kids, it can be rewarding. So years are starting passing by. By the time I realized, you know, it was time. It was 10 years. And that's when I said, okay, um, it has been longer than two, than two years. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to law school. If I would go to law school, I was thinking about doing like real estate attorney. I was like, well, what about maybe um, I, I love real estate. So what if I actually do sell some yeah. real estate and save all the money and the time? And, and let's see. So I said, OK, if I don't sell anything the first year of real estate, I just go to law school. But thank God I sold. How many did you year? sell the first year? 12, 12? 12 properties. Wow. Now let's consider that it was the time when interest rates were low. Right. So it was easy to sell. A little bit of a cheat code. Yes, yeah, it yes, was. it was easy to everybody. I mean, it was easy. It, it, there were a lot of buyers. It was a lot of competition. So a lot of competition. still it was a hard time, but I did it, you know? Yeah, we faced some complications ourselves when the, the market was like that. A lot of, a lot of agents were wrongfully, and they admit it now, that they were recommending that clients, um, you know, no appraisal, no in inspection. They were can canceling all these things to try and sweeten their deal. And we got a lot of inspections that people say, we need one, and then, oh, we just changed our deal so that we're not having an inspection. They'd cancel our inspection on us. I remember, you know, learning how to do appraisal waivers yeah. and realtors that had been on this for a while. They're like, this is not normal. No. To me, it was normal. So I step in when that was the situation. Crazy. So to me, it was normal having to do a two-day option period with like, or one-day inspection day, you know, and, and negotiate. Like, you had to do the inspection, but it didn't matter because you had to waive it. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy during that time. But that's how I entered into the real estate industry. So it has always been crazy. <laughs> Lately, we've been telling people we really need seven, seven to 10-day options. Yes. Because it's, it's picking up to the point where people are getting very busy. Again. Yes, it yeah. is. It's, it's, I think I this four years, you know, like I said, and I entered in real estate during that COVID crazy time. And I don't think I have enjoyed the market as some people call it a normal market mm -hmm. because right now the interest rates are so high. and So it's kind of like a, a moment of like where the economy, the market is stabilizing. So it's been a process of learning every phase yeah, of the market. You didn't enter at a normal time. You entered at the, probably oh. one of the strangest times in real yes. estate. And now you have to almost relearn yes. what's normal. Exactly. Normal. And then it'll change inevitably it'll change. again. So over a three to four year period, you've seen. But you know, that's part of it, learning extremes, every yeah. phase. So next time when, when the market is, let's say, normal, I'll be like, oh, easy race. Just cruising, <laughs> right? Yes. So how, I, you know, this podcast, we always try and discover what makes you different, how you've been successful. Um, we really only interview top producing agents, and everyone always wants to know, how is it that you get clients? How do you, one, how do you get them? And two, how do you keep them? Well, I try, you know, um, I always enjoy social media. Mm -hmm. I, I'm the kind of person that 
every person is built different, but myself, I like to express myself a lot and put myself out there. Yeah. Um, so the first, I guess, resource or tool that I used was social media. Just telling everybody I'm a realtor, you know, and, in, you know, get in contact to my sphere, my people. Um, right now, you know, as a realtor, you grow. So now it's referrals, a lot of referrals with people, um, implementing systems. But I would say one of the strongest um, tools that I have is social media. Social media. Mm -hmm. yes. What do you do? Because I, I know a lot of people will, um, one agent I know that's very successful, he posts the same stuff essentially every time, which is uh, just listed, just funded, or funded and closed, under under contract, and he just keeps posting the same stuff over and over, but it seems to work. Do you have a... You know what? I I don't do that. Okay. And that's something sometimes I'm like, should I do that? Should I do that? Be more... Um, just post like just listed. Showing you the transactions and the, right. I, I, I like to interact more with people, uh -huh. like kind of know a little bit more of who I am, what right. I do, without actually being too explicit, right? Mm -hmm. When it gets to the point that you cross the professional line, but yet kind of them to see who I am. Right. Like what I do, who said that. People want to work with people, they don't want to work yes, with Yes, I don't want to just show just listed, list, listed. Mm -hmm. It's more about who's Edna, what does Edna do? I mean, right. um, you know, and, and also one of the things that I, to me, is very important, it's edu like education. I guess it's my teacher in me that right. I that I have. Educate your clients. It's educating the clients, and yeah. especially um, the Hispanic community. I don't think I've done it as I would like to, or as I should have have, and that's something that I'm working on, and putting okay. more, um, I would say more, um, you know, content out there in Spanish for the community. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, yeah, I haven't really done it. Why? I'm not sure. I mean, English is my second language. Um, but I think right now I do see the need. I guess as, as, as you grow as a realtor, you also see now the needs of the community versus when you're new, you just don't know. Like, you're just learning. Right. But right now I see it more clear what it's needed, what needs to be done. And it's educating the public, educating the Hispanic community. Um, I've I've heard from numerous realtors in the Hispanic community that there are some there are some sharks and predators out there that know someone that's immigrating and speaks Spanish maybe mm -hmm. not really accustomed to American traditions. Yeah. These different loan companies, different agents can go in and tell them a different story than what's yes. reality and take complete advantage of them. Yes. And actually like um you know I was I did an interview about that with Telemundo because they were doing a, um, a you know, a research about, um, again, these people, it's not that, let's say some people, oh, they just don't know. Well, yeah, they don't know. They come from Why a whole, they, know? Yeah. they come from a whole different country, different language, different systems, Everything. different laws. Um, and it can be, you know, complicated, it's overwhelming. overwhelming. Yeah. And many times the trust, you know, they don't know the system. so. Someone can just either they trust too much and be like, hey, yeah, yeah, help me out. Or like, no, I don't I don't trust you right. because they don't know. So many people, one of the main issues we see is like they do seller by owners. Yes. Or someone can say, hey, I sell you this house, give me a big down payment. But yet it's a lease instead really of a purchase. Yep. Ten years, five years down the road, they don't own the house. Right. So that's one of the things that as a realtor is like, First, like let you know, letting them know that this is legit, letting them know about the systems, mm -hmm. um, and walk them through the process so they don't find themselves in situations like, oh well, it's my house, I bought it, or I give this huge down payment and yet I go and there's somebody else in the house. So it's something that happens a lot within the Hispanic community. It's unfortunate, but it is. It's good that you're educating. How do you how do you gain the trust? Because it, I mean, if I'm if I'm new. If I just moved to Italy, I'd have no idea how yeah. to buy a property. Yeah. And I go, let's say I go through one or two people that I'm like, this can't be right. Mm -hmm. And I go to you. How, yeah. how is it that you're, I, what is it that you're doing that they're gaining their trust? I think that's something that I'm working on. Yeah. And it's, once again, I guess, putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. exp you know, building, doing content, creating content for them, for them to see you. And of course, you know, action speaks for themselves. If you put yourself out there and they see you're, you're producing and you're educating them, you're known in the community, I think that's, you know, they're gaining that trust that, oh, I know her, she sells homes. Right. 
that's kind of how it goes. Oh, yeah, I see she sells homes and people, there's no issues. You get it. enough people coming. Yes, referrals. Build a, mm -hmm. a reputation. Spread, you know, just a, a reputation, yeah. 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 So that's, that's something that I would say, you know, it works, like, with people. And obviously being bilingual, you get a, a certain percentage of the population that wants to work with you because they might yeah. not understand. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to translate everything that's in English. Well, uh, it's it's about explaining them the yeah. process, of course, because it's like you have a, a you know a contract. You're like, okay, well, this is what this is yeah, for. Right. This is the process. This is what's gonna happen. I mean, any person that has a first time home buyer is always gonna be like, this is a overwhelming. It's yes, too much. It's a lot. Then can you imagine when it's a whole a different language? It's a it can be a little bit more overwhelming. So do you seek out then um, the vendors that have Spanish speakers? So you're I looking do. For, um, I always make sure that, for instance, my lenders are bilingual because I don't like to just say I only work, you know, as a realtor, I want to be a very well-rounded realtor, but I do listings, I do buyers, I do any price point, right? I don't like to say, oh, I'm just luxury or I just work this. No. I'm a realtor and I'm there for the community and I can help you, um, you know, help my buyers and, and, and listings or buyers or sellers. So I, I, I like to, you know, to have my, my team of people that are bilingual mm -hmm. or they have the systems to assist someone that is bilingual. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, we find that important too. So Emiliano, he's our Spanish speaking inspector and he gets requested regularly. Of course, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he can, and in a, in a home inspection, there's a lot of complex words and explaining how construction works. Yeah. And then, if it's only English, he tells you something, and you're like, well, you've said what pipe of what? Exactly. You want me to tell that? I don't yeah. know. That. So yeah. that's been a huge benefit for us. Yes. Having yes. a Spanish-speaking inspector. Yes, the community is it, is growing, and um, the Hispanic community is also evolving. Right. Where there's a point that now, um, I don't know, I guess some people think that, how can I explain it in a nice way? Like, there's money. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of business owners, yes. small owners within the Hispanic community of course. that sometimes people don't acknowledge. So there's people buying homes in the Hispanic community. A lot of people like want to purchase, but yet sometimes I don't think there's the education there for them right. to know what routes or what to do. Okay. So yeah. you've based a lot of it on your success, you would say, on educating communities that might not... I would say so, or um, again, I'm, you know, only about to be four years. Um, it's my goal to continue there and continue right. growing and continue educating that. Mm -hmm. So how do you farm out? Let's say you have a, a community. I know a, real, a lot of real estate agents find success in finding one, maybe one neighborhood or one mom group or one yeah. whatever that group yeah. is and then farming that whole community. Yes. So, I mean, at some point, I'm sure you've run into one gentleman or, or couple or someone that knows 10 people mm -hmm. that need real estate. So how do you make sure that you, you farm those networks? What are you doing? Um, I personally, I mean, the Metroplex is huge, right? Yeah, and I go everywhere you need me. But I focus mainly Dallas mm -hmm. or Dallas County. Let's put it that way because they're so big. It's so huge. Yeah. But usually it's within Dallas County that it's my, my niche where I focus more with my buyers. In farming, um, again, I think that's something that I'm still working on because I don't like to follow your traditional systems. Like, right. let me send postcards, you know. No. I, I, I don't I don't believe in that. Like, I mean, I know there's people who do, and I respect that. It works for some people. <laughs> it but works for some people, I don't know but, how, I, but yeah, it works I for some people. I personally don't um, do that. If I do, I would like, I, I'm more like, the kind of person that I do door knocking. Mm -hmm. I do believe in door knocking, even though it's very traditional, I do believe on the face-to-face -face interaction with people. You have to know your demographic too. Yes, I, I believe more in door knocking. Yeah. If I see a seller by owner, go in a knock and be like, well, I'm a listing agent, I'm a I realtor, can I can help you, let me have you, you know, see do you have any equity, your property, what's the value? And, you know, start that mm -hmm. communication with people. So I'm more about uh, prospecting. I do a calling, you know, I do circle prospecting. I, I do, you know, face-to-face -face or knocking. That's more like my cup of tea. What's the one thing you do that you think you get the biggest result from? Mm, I would say the one that I do the best is like the building the relationships with people. Okay. To me personally. Yeah. 
I mean, if you want to do more, like, you know, like if you're talking about massive people, of course, social media and cold calling, prospecting. Mm -hmm. But if he's talking about really, like, connecting with people, it's doing the, the follow-up with people and doing one-on-one. Again, -on -one. just repeatedly talking to them, making be sure consistent. they know who you they are. Yes. Yeah. Be present. Yeah. You want to be top of mind. The social media yes. helps with that. If you've had a conversation with someone, they know who you are, likely they're going to forget you if you've only met them once or twice. You want people to think, like, when they think about a home, oh, that's the person. I meet so many agents. They go, yeah, I gave this guy my card. I said, if you ever need help, just give me a call. I'm like, you did that one time? No. He's, he didn't put you in his phone as the realtor to call. No. You gave him a card one time. You have to contact this You have man. to be on their, like, for instance, you have to, and social media, to me it's just social media because people are on their, I mean, sadly, but people are on their phones every day. Yep. Right, we are in our phones. So my point is open your phone. As soon as you open your phone, they're said that. You want to see Edna. <laughs> they're said that. Edna's telling me something or yeah. Edna's listed something or Edna's selling something. Yeah. I go to Edna's story and it's showing a home. Or and that is telling me something about real estate and or the it, market. It's so fresh that they go realtor. Oh, let me yes. find Edna on Instagram. So that's like to get to know. And then once they have that contact, even if I had a conversation with you once about interested about selling or buying, you go immediately in my CRM. Right. And I'll be in contact with you one way or the other, mm -hmm. depending the person or what you know. The CRMs we. I, I talk to people all the time, oh, I send this many emails, this many emails, but what's your return rate? They always say one or two percent. We don't, we I, don't send as many emails anymore. We've, we've switched more to text messaging because I, if I send 3,000 emails and I get one or two percent people returning that versus when I send text messages from the CRM, we get like a 30 percent return. Yes. Exactly. I I don't like to be sending that many emails. I don't think they do much. Now, again, I don't want to say this because I'm speaking of personal yeah. experience or me, I guess. I'm, I'm not the kind of realtor that's going to be sending you emails. Blasting email after email. I don't think people read them because I don't read them. <laughs> I don't read them either, and I know. So that's the way. Maybe it's something wrong that I do, no. but the way I see, if I don't do it, most likely somebody else won't do it either. Yeah. Well, it's like guys that collect cars a every every group of those guys like I think that car is cool and like five of his buddies think that car is cool and that's why that car gets valued so high because yeah the masses go that's cool and then you but so it's the same thing if you're if you if you're not doing it your friends aren't reading the emails why is there no one else is reading it? I honestly think if I said hi oh, you know it's time to clean your blinds no. I don't think people will honestly no. like see it I don't oh, I personally don't I see really it. don't now I don't want to offend people because some realtors do it and maybe it works for them and it's great I'm not saying it doesn't work I'm just saying it's I not pers your thing. it's personally I don't do that because again right. I don't want to say people why well, I, I do it and it works great I'm not saying it's just me personally. It's not something that I, I I'm very passionate about real estate mm -hmm. and my clients. Like I honestly, I, I, okay. So we're real estate. It's a very lucrative business, right? You it make money. Be. It can yeah. be. It can be very lucrative, but I, be, I'm, I strong believer that you have to love what you do, and I think that's one of the reasons why I retired from teaching because I, I liked it. I learned to love it, but I wasn't passionate about it. Right. And I would see, like, for instance, teachers in my hall, they were passionate about it. Like, they were like, oh, I'm having this lesson, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and the kids. And I was like, I don't want to undo, like, I think the kids deserve a teacher that is passionate every single day. And that's why I made that decision of, like, it's not fair for them, it's not fair for me. Right. And, and, and real estate is something that you're so... Passion, I, 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 I'm passionate about it. I, I, I enjoy it. Um, you have to be creative, you know. So when you when you're passionate about something, you're cre you know, your creative vibes start flowing. Yes. And I think with real estate, you have to be creative. You have to be unique. It's not about doing what the other realtor is doing. You have to be you. What works for you. So for instance, emails. It may work for some people. It's not my thing. No. So why do we even waste my energy there? I, I, I completely agree. <laughs> Find what works for you and yes. really press into yes. it. Yes. So when you're not not sending emails. And doing all things, <laughs> Sorry, what, guys. If you send emails, I'm sure what, it works for you. <laughs> what are you doing uh, when you're not working, when you're not trying to hustle a business? Oh, that's 
That's interesting because, again, when you do what you love, you're always you're doing always something. Yeah. So at some point, it's connected with what you do. We're always. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Yes, I'm doing it for fun, but yet it's connected with my business. Um, I love networking. Mm -hmm. I believe in networking and the power of networking. Um, I believe on like connecting with people. Um, the connections is what make your business very strong, you know, the people you partner with. So I'm, my free, free, very own time, it's be at my house, you know, with my family, right. having downtime. Um, but even then, you know, my boyfriend's a contractor, so even though we're at home, at some point we're always talking about homes or projects or things. Um, it's your whole life. It's my whole life, but I enjoy... Um, you know, and many of my friends are realtors, you know, that became the ones that were not now they're realtors. Yeah. So it's always about business. But I enjoy um, sharing with people and networking. Always talking about, so I went to a conference last week. Uh, it was um, just a whole bunch of home inspectors. There was yeah. 300 home inspector oh company goodness. owners in one conference. Yeah. And it was at a, uh, a resort. And towards the end of the day, there was like one presentation left and it wasn't something that I really wanted to see. So I went, worked out and then got in the pool afterwards before the group dinner. Yes. And it just, it's so classic, right? A lot of guys did the same thing. They worked out, they sat in the pool, and then this like circle of home inspectors forms in the pool, and all they're doing is talking about home inspections. Yeah. And like, we just spent seven hours yeah. talking about it. Can yeah. we, anything else? It's gonna, it's gonna. Can we talk about tennis? Can we talk about flat? I don't care. It's gonna be challenging, again, because you, you're so passionate about your business, mm -hmm. right? It's your business, it's your brand, it's your, it's not just the business, it's like your ideas coming to fruition, yeah. you see them. It's impossible not to talk about it. And then you surround yourself around people that is like-minded and have probably the same goals or the same, you know, challenges. So you find yourself talking about the same thing because yeah. that's the people you surround yourself with. So I go with like, for instance, my lender and we're friends from like way before, like even my teacher era, like we're friends from like way before. And we, even though you don't want to, you find yourself talking about, you know, real estate. Real estate. Name, yeah. It is like, it's impossible not to when it's something that you truly enjoy. That's why I try and find friends that know nothing about what I do so I can. You know what? The problem is they start asking you about real estate. <laughs> you're like, you're like, can we just talk about something else? And they'll be like, so what's this? You're like, don't get me started because I, I won't stop. <laughs> so I, I've been in contracting myself to uh, kitchen bathroom remodels for, for 16 yeah. years. And it's so well known that if I go to someone's house party, so I go there, for, they've invited me for a Christmas party. Yeah. Like, hey, let me show you this in the bathroom. We got a little problem. Do you think you could? I don't want to, You're talk, like, about I don't want to talk about right it now. because yeah. if you go, you know we do you know you we find ourselves with friends that are not there like Edna so when is the rates going to go down mm -hmm. like don't get me started no, I don't want to don't don't tell me because yeah. I won't stop <laughs> or like hey what do you think the house you think we can sell it don't tell me that because I'll be like here's your CMA <laughs> yeah you so, gotta yeah. go and yeah you gotta start working <laughs> no I don't work no you know there's a time that you now there are days that are very um, like any you know business or job that are can be highly stressful of you course. know there are days that you're like okay today I love what I do but today I don't want to know about this you know when you have like a deal fall through or after the inspections it falls through <laughs> yeah we're good at that yeah. or like you're you know like you're in the process of repairing the cut like the, you know the repairs and sometimes they fall through or things happen then you're like okay today I just need to decompress and forget about this and I do um, I think teaching helped me to do that Help me teach, um, again, being a teacher, you have, you know, I learned to like, okay, it's time to cut it cut it when I need to, like yep. I really need to, when I'm like to a level of like my stress You're is. You're not gonna be productive. Yes, and there's so a point that you're like off. said, I cut it, and that's when I cut it. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow, The yes, everything's falling apart, um, but tomorrow will be a new day, yep. and I can think straight right now. That's very important. I know a lot of people that try and push through that. There's times that you just can't. And it's, you're so overwhelmed, and you, you the next day you look back and go, why did, I, why did I make that decision when you have a clear head? Not only that, but sometimes it's not up to me. Right. 
Sometimes it's like I there's you know in the transaction there's so many pieces and factors involved that sometimes you're like you but know you what you get blamed for them of course <laughs> and at that moment you're just like you know what I'm just gonna turn off the computer um, and pray about it and check out for the check rest out of the day. and yeah. tomorrow we'll figure out and I it do works. that too and that's when I just you know go for a walk there's one or two days a month where it's three o'clock and I go, ah, I'm done. I'm done. I just to, can't. I, I can't today. Right. And I just, um, that's when I just cook and chill and just decompress and don't right. think about it. So markets ever-changing, adapting. Um, the, the agents that adapt to the changes are the ones that stick around for 20 years. Yes, you, I can see that. Yeah, you came in at a time where all you've done is adapted to yes. it. Yes. So I think you're going to be good at that. Yes. But where do you see your business? Where do you see it? it going in a direction that you, maybe you're not used to? Well, um, again, you know, I started with a lot of, in the middle of the midst of craziness mm -hmm. and the global pandemic. Right now in the middle of like, the inflation is at its highest. Um, the next thing are, you know, we have huge changes with the MLS, you know, right. with, yep. the, um, with buyers, agents. Um, so there's changes coming up, but I always see that when you, when there's big changes like that, and there's like a whole, let's say, not revolution, but a whole, when something gets shaken, I think it's the opportunity to for you to be a pioneer of doing something new and different and better. A pioneer. Yes. Like for instance, right now, um, you know, and I don't want to get in much details, but you know, the new changes coming right. out with the MLS and bias representation and I think instead of panicking, it's going to be a moment for you to see what new systems you can implement, what new ways to reach out to people or how to restructure things, right? And make things work best for you and of course for the buyers. Right. But um, I do, again, I love buyers, but I'm lately being more like a listing agent. Um, so I see myself in the future being more towards like listings and helping mm -hmm. sellers. Um, I am with EXP, so right. we we are very heavy at you know bringing people to our teams and coaching them. And um, so I see myself having a team, probably over hundred people. Okay. In the next probably five years. I like or that less. a lot. Yes. Um, I guess it's the teacher and me coaching like once you're a teacher you can you know I right. can get out of the classroom but it's so in me it the, the coaching the helping the assisting the teaching the guiding um, so I see myself um, coaching um, you know in the real estate business I like that yeah coaching. and coaching is something that I've is speaking as well um, I do have I started um, doing like this monthly events and we do, we do attract a lot of realtors. It's mainly for the real estate business. It could be realtors or anybody in the real estate industry. And it's more like, you know, towards women empowerment. So that's what I see myself. Um, real estate, coaching, helping, guiding, empowering. I like it. I don't want to say just women, but that's, you know, I guess my vibe it's is a very, it's yeah. a very girly vibe. Yeah. <laughs> so I am open for like both, but I think I'm, I, you know, I, I, I attract a lot of like, what is the women empowerment and helping women grow. That's a great movement. So, yeah. yeah. Public speaking is, it's a whole nother animal. It's it is. It is. Um, but I like it. Yeah. I enjoy it too. I, I, I enjoy it. You know, when I was a teenager, I was a, a youth, not pastor because I didn't have the credentials, but I was a youth leader. And I would just like, you know, talk to kids, like yeah. hundreds of kids. So it's something that I like it. I, I love to be um, in front of people and talk to people. Now every person has different gifts or some people that's another thing. They're right. like, I don't want to speak to in front of people. I just can't. I love it. I really do. So that's what I see myself. I like that. I want to keep track. Maybe we'll yeah. touch back in a year yeah. or so. Yeah, see. yeah, definitely. So yeah. We'll I'll doing. tell you now I'm speaking. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But that's what I see. Um, growing as a realtor, um, myself, of course, my production, right? But also guiding other people to do that and empowering women. I love that. Yeah. Well, then we will definitely have to check back in yeah. a year or so. Yes. 
But until then, I thank you very much for your time thank sitting you. down with me today. I thank learned a lot you. about you. Such a pleasure. We're going to put all of Edna's information in the description to, below. Yes. Uh, specifically, if you need Spanish speaking or you, or you know some, some of your uh, friends and family that need that, uh, contact Edna. We'll, we'll have uh, Instagram and your social media yes. definitely yes. below. Yes. So. But other than thank that, you. thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you thank on the next you. one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.